it's Michelle and I've got another foraged food for you guys today. I don't know if you guys are enjoying the foraged foods videos, but leave me a comment and let me know. But here in southeastern Kentucky, there are lots of foraged foods that we are lucky enough to take advantage of. And one of those is poke salad. So technically just the plant here before we prepare it into a food dish is just called pokeweed. And the prepared dish that you make with that is poke salad, or as a lot of people around here say, just poke salad. It's a favorite around here and we love it, but you must know how to prepare it properly. I've got some warnings to give you about poke salad. First of all, before you go foraging for any foods, you must be 110% certain that you know exactly what you're looking for. You don't want to get the wrong thing because many things could be very poisonous. And that brings me to my second point. Poke weed is toxic. And I know you guys are probably thinking, what is up with hillbillies and their poisonous foods? But my response to that is even chicken, if you don't cook it properly, and also eggs. If they're not pasteurized, you have to fully cook those to eliminate the possibility of salmonella. So for us around here, this is no different. It's just in how you prepare it. And we just eat the leaves as cooked greens the way that you would do with collard greens or kale or anything like that. You just can't eat this raw. It can't go in a salad or anything like that, so don't try to do that. The entire plant from root to tip is toxic in its raw form, specifically denoted by the purple color on the stems. The leaves are the least toxic part, so that's why we eat those, and we can cook the toxins out of that, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a few minutes also. But first we're gonna go over a little bit about how to clean this out. So like I said, the leaves are the least poisonous part. Next would be the stems, and the very most toxic part that you never want to eat is the roots and the berries. So, pokeweed can grow as high as 10 feet tall, but you don't wanna let it get that far before you pick it if you're gonna be eating it, because the larger it grows, the more toxic it becomes. And you wanna get it when it's at this stage or maybe even a little younger before it reaches two feet tall for sure. I'm gonna bring in my salad spinner here and as I cut up my leaves, I'm gonna put them right into here and then take that over to my sink and give it a rinse before we start boiling out the toxins. Okay, so a lot of people will take the leaf and pull it off and peel that. And as you can see, that gets your stem right back down to green and you can get rid of that purple part which denotes the toxin and you can use that and a lot of people will then finish peeling the stems and put some of those in as well So like I was telling you guys, a lot of people will use the stems and you can see that there's a lot of that purple color left. And if you want to go ahead and peel that and make sure that all of the purple is gone, then you can throw that into your dish as well. So this is a pretty big batch, or what people around here would call a mess. They would say they got a mess of poke. Also on some of these larger leaves that have sort of that purplish color going up the back of the leaf, I'm going to go ahead and give that a peel to get rid of as much of that purple as I can. 
before we take it to the stove because like I said that purple is what denotes the toxins so just kind of peel that off anywhere you can to be on the safe side these look very good no purple at all still have to cook it though never try to eat raw poke salad you will get very sick you really don't even have to use a knife at this point you can just peel the leaf from there and that'll peel down along the stem to remove that purple break it again and peel backwards to remove it from the leaf As a matter of fact, the purple part probably peels much easier if you do tear it rather than cutting it. But you can do it either way. Now here is a very large one. And you can see there's a lot of purple color starting to come onto the leaves. I'm just going to set those aside and not use those. Some of the ones more toward the top you can go ahead and use. So I'm going to finish taking off the rest of my leaves. Take this over to my sink and give it a rinse and then a spin out. And I'll be back to show you guys what we do next. So I gave it a good rinse and a couple of good spins and as you guys can see I went ahead and cut up some of the stems in there on the smaller parts of the stem and also made sure to peel any of the purple off of there. So we are ready to take this over to the stove and start boiling out the toxins. Okay on my stove top I've got a big pasta pot with the strainer insert that I've had on high, bringing that water up to temperature. It's kind of steaming right now, but not quite boiling. I'm going to go ahead and add in my poke. sure everything gets underwater. We're going to go ahead and put our lid back on that so that it'll come up to a boil a little bit faster and do the same process over for three boilings to make sure that all the toxins are gone. Okay we're getting a little bit of a rumble in there. You want to make sure that it comes to a full rolling boil and it is Just make sure that all of that is down in the water. And then we can take that out. going to set that aside. So now I'm going to take my pot over to the sink, pour this water out, and run that full of new clean water. Give this another rinse, and then we'll do the whole process over for a second time. And I'm going to get that back in there, making sure my water's hot before it goes in. 
but not quite to a boil yet. We want that to come up to a boil in the water. And we've got a nice full rolling boil again for a second time. So again, I'm going to let that continue to boil. And I like to stir it around in the meantime, making sure that none of those leaves are stuck together and we get a good boil on all sides of everything to make sure all that toxin cooks out. Okay, so again, this has been at a full rolling boil for about 10 minutes. And again, we can take that out. I'm going to drain everything away. And again, I'm going to give that a rinse. And I'm going to take this over to the sink, change it out for clean water, bring it to a boil again, and we'll do the whole process for a third time. And now we have our third rolling boil, so we're going to let that boil for another 10 minutes. So that is 10 minutes on our third and final boil. And our poke salad should be completely detoxified at this point. I'm just going to drain that all out and give it one more rinse and spin in the salad spinner. And here is the final product. You guys can see that just like any other green, it has cooked way down. And it has reduced tremendously in size. And from all of the rigorous cooking that it had to go through, it's pretty much chopped already. That's why we start with whole leaves because we probably wouldn't have much left if we chopped them first but you can just come through with the edge of your spoon and kind of chop up any larger pieces that are left in there and you're ready to use this just like you would any other cooked greens you can put it in soups or stews anything that you want to put it in one of the not so healthy versions that a lot of people like to do around here that I really wouldn't recommend is to then fry this up in bacon grease with some of the bacon bits in there and maybe a little bit of onion. But if you did want to fry it up that way, you could definitely do that with maybe some avocado oil or something not so unhealthy as bacon grease, but the bacon in there should be just fine. Another healthier way that my husband usually likes this prepared is just to cook this in with some scrambled eggs and it is delicious. So there's another foraged food for you guys from southeastern Kentucky. I hope you guys enjoy it and again be certain if you go foraging for any kind of food that you know 110% positive what you are looking for and I hope this has helped you guys and I hope you enjoyed the video. So don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a like over on my Facebook page. And be sure to join our Facebook group, Healthy Minds and Bodies. Also follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. And don't forget to visit my blog. I'll have the links to all of those in the description below. So be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.